Ah! Ah! <laughs> Just in case you, in case you missed Brayden, I thought I'd just ah! We're back! We're back! Oh! There we go. It's like he never it's like he never left. Yeah. We turned up all our mics just just in case. Yeah. So so any anyway, where do we leave? We left off on Sir David Ferrand. Mm-hmm. Um, another so another we, hi, highly touted demon hunter of the Wiccan, ancient order. Wiccan paranormal investigator. <laughs> investigator. Vampire Slayer. So he kind of, in, I want to, what do you want to say, Dan? He kind of started paying attention to all the news articles. He was into the occult, got excited, started interviewing a lot of the people that were coming forward with these supposed encounters, right? And he decided, wise, well, he's, you know, man of mystery, this guy, paranormal investigator, investigatory journalist, decided to spend the night in Highgate Cemetery. Wise, wise thing to do. Right, I would say that. Right, because initially, I'm pretty sure he was convinced that this was actually just pranksters or just BS. He thought maybe a large animal that was killing all these foxes, whatever, but he did not subscribe to the fact that there was any type of entity or vampire invading the Highgate uh, Cemetery. So he kind of went on record saying, like, this fucking, he confirmed what we were saying. Like, at this time, the cemetery was in complete despair, right? This, everything was falling apart. Everything looked like shit. There was... There was literally like tombs wide open. And when you go in and look, there were corpses outside of the caskets. Like yeah, people removed gross. them completely. Ugh. Body parts. Um, body parts lying like, around. Yeah. Yep. Uh, one of the tombs actually was like, they went inside and the casket was completely burnt. Uh, he found one with a stake through its heart. So obviously there's been some fucking weird ass shit. He s confirms that he saw all the foxes that had been exsanguinated, all that type of stuff. So again, he goes... Checks it all out, and while he's checking out, he says, you know what? The only way to know for sure is if I spend the night here. And when I do spend the night here, it's going to have to be on December 21st, the winter solstice. Because mm. yeah, what is it with the winter solstice? Is like when the, the veil's thin on the, you know, the, the worldly plane and the spiritual plane are very thin isn't on like the, the winter solstice. Isn't it the longest day, though? Like when... It's winter solstice it's the longest short, day or like, it's, it's shortest the shortest day. shortest day in the northern hemisphere. Oh, okay. So then yeah, longest you'd have the longest night. So either so, way, yeah, that would go hand in hand dude, with the shortest day. Fucking freezing, like December. <laughs> like December. That hu like, that that London humid cold December. Oh, oh I bet it'd be brutal. fucking suck. Yeah, All right. But not if you're a demon hunter. You don't get no, cold. You tough yeah, it out, man. Cool. They're a different breed. Front. Yeah, so when we talk about paranormal investigator, self-proclaimed magician. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so just around a midnight, while he was camping out in Highgate Cemetery, he saw a seven-foot-tall creature with glowing red eyes. Mm. His feet were levitating off the ground, and he was gliding between headstones. David reports feeling as if his life force was being drained from him. All of a sudden, Man. he started reciting a Kabbalistic prayer to ward off evil and the figure vanished david then wrote to the local newspaper the ham and high mm -hmm. <laughs> it's short for two i don't know it's the ham it's and like high. the hampstead and something and yeah, yeah. Hampstead yeah. And high gate. <laughs> so he wrote a letter and it got published in the local newspaper basically asking it was like i wanted to add like have you experienced anything weird at the highgate cemetery if you have please get in touch with me uh, and one of the uh, weirdest parts about this is the fact that the most common sighting that everybody's having is that one that kind of Dan described that David saw too is that large, tall, ghostly figure with burning red eyes and a large black hat. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and, like I mentioned before, D David Fran. Now that now I go back and, and look at I'm looking at my notes and stuff. So uh, one of the one of the things that's used to describe him is self proclaimed magician. Um, and now, now I realize I'm like, is this guy like he's doing like card tricks? I'm like, no, no, no. There's a distinction because I feel like if they were writing this article and they were describing him as a self-proclaimed magician, he's not. He's not doing card tricks. He's not doing song on women and half. Right? That's an illusionist. Right? A magician it would be like an actual sorcerer. So he was like claiming that probably that he had some type of, you know, magical powers of some sort. You know, like specific about it. <laughs> 
<laughs> and it's just, uh, but yeah. So, um, I get Derek Farron, Job. I get Job vibes from him. Like Job yeah. <laughs> illusions michael um so uh he now he he does come from um you know he kind of has a legit paranormal uh, paranormal background he did help establish the british psychic and occult so society the boss the b boss right um legit to quit. and so uh contrary to what manchester was saying that this that this entity was some type of king vampire that had taken up residence within highgate cemetery farron on the other hand believed that highgate cemetery was the home to just a, a not exact not a vampire but some other type of supernatural entity that something was there but it wasn't a vampire right and so now you have these two I guess larger than life personalities. You have Manchester over here and you've got Farron on the other side and then pretty much having these dueling narratives of like what's going dueling theories about what's going on within the cemetery. And then also they're trying to figure out, you know, exactly how they're going to deal with it. And these two developed a rivalry uh, between each other and supernatural like, monster hunter rivalry, the best kind out there, the best rivalry known charged. to the world of sports. Yeah, and they, and they, I mean, like a rivalry to the point where they were like they were writing insults they to each other, hated each other. Like they were issuing like I imagine they're issuing like cutting like wrestling promos like on <laughs> in the in the in the fucking press like in the local newspapers and like talking so much shit about each other about how fucking oh, the others whack ass. Sean so, Manchester powers. is a sissy. <laughs> no, but like so, there's a lot to this because apparently. Sean Winchester came out and was devoutly against um, the British government's decision to repeal the Witchcraft Act of 1951, and the Ferrand was a Wiccan, a practicing Wiccan. And, and we right, talked. So we talked about this. Wait, stuff. You we said, talked about you this said stuff Winchester. In the other one. You said Winchester, Manchester. but it's Manchester. Manchester. Winch Either. The Winch The Winchesters would be disappointed in both of these. Yeah, and if people remember back to the to the to the Battersea Poltergeist, like witchcraft, that was still kind of illegal. <laughs> like it was yeah. like it was still um it was but still very much on the books law yeah it's like it's still on books law of like witchcraft being illegal so you have a lot of friction because you have like the the you know the wiccan witch spiritual crowd and then you have like fucking bible thump and bishop but not the right? not the not the vatican's Kind of different kind of a different kind. kind. Yeah. yeah, this but, is like this is like some warlocks versus paladin bullshit. Like, well, and then yeah. it, like, <laughs> yeah. so some of those it was hilarious, but um, for the news for the local newspaper, uh, Ferrant claimed that in order to banish this vampire, he was going to sacrifice a cat. <laughs> Everybody likes that. It's like that automatically right. puts everybody against you. Like it's what not the a fox fuck? though. It's not a fox. No, oh, but so he he said that, and then Sean uh, Manchester came repeat like went on the newspaper the next week or whatever, and was like, "The only reason he's sacrificing a cat is to in order to raise a demon to destroy me." It has nothing to do with him wanting to banish blood magic. Fuck, right? Sacrifice is blood magic. Yep. Right. Boys, listen, we're talking we're talking Dumbledore yeah. versus fucking Grindelwald here. Like these guys are about to fucking we're we're culminating. They hated fucking, each other. Oh, like yeah, yeah. man, they're about uh, to throw down on a magical standoff. It is it it is it is really impressive to me about like how much these these two really hated each other based on just their like their two different theories about what was going on and how to deal with the supernatural entity that had seemingly uh, you know is now occupying Highgate Cemetery like how to get rid of it and like them just kind of throwing down and being though? like could you imagine if they teamed up right because you could be like abracadabra Jesus case closed <laughs> I guess not Jesus not Jesus because it's bishops. You know what I mean? Like just, right? uh, um, so their rivalry would would go on and, and pretty much like reach like a climax around around Friday the thirteenth of February nineteen seventy, as Thames TV ran an actual live TV program uh, about the saga unfolding between these two, where they had scheduled uh, an actual hunt for this vampire. Right, they're, they're, like they had announced it, and they had they had like hyped it up for like a couple of weeks. Who apparently. can rid? 
high gate of the vamp, the light or the dark. You be the <laughs> judge. February thirteenth. February thirteenth. Vampires, blood sucking chaos. Friday, Friday, Friday. Blood magic versus the light. You be but the listen, judge. Man, the entire city's there. Everybody's pumped on this. There is a school teacher named Mr. Blood. This is amazing. Awesome fucking name. He brought his students to watch this. <laughs> That's the coolest teacher ever. Fuck, man. That's, that's amazing. Right? Uh, right, like, this is like, they got a crowd. Everybody's out here to watch this shit. <laughs> yeah. You shall and expel like, the demons first. And you had plenty of spectators, but you had many, many participants as well. Because apparently within hours of the broadcast starting or like getting there, you had dozens of I'm picturing Demon a hunters. lot of 19, 1970s edgelords loaded up for vampire hunting. So you got dudes. Listen, I'm off work in half an hour. I'm going to go home and grab my steak. Grab some yeah. fucking I'm gonna grab my band. Some... I'm going to grab my bandolier steaks. Yeah. I'm going to get my I'm going to get my necklace of holy my holy water water balloons go. and I'm going to be ready to fucking roll, you know? And it's it's just like yeah, um it, apparently they they arrived from all corners of London. Like they just came down to the, the you know came down to the Highgate Cemetery, and and the police had actually set up a cordon to like because this was this was an event that was getting a little bit out of hand, and they knew there's something was going to happen. But these people just busted right through because there were so many of them just like going through. Everybody's super eager to hunt down this king vampire that was uh, terrorizing the people of Highgate. Uh, awesome. Brooks was there. <laughs> He's from England, I think. <laughs> um and so like so this was this all happened in like february so this was this was pretty much like the 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 uh like this is probably the highest point of the entire thing like the most popularized point of, of the high gate vampire so so after this like nobody nobody caught anything uh apparently like uh, nothing, nothing there's too many really... people watching the vamp didn't come out to play Right, it's smart enough to be like oh, I'm gonna stay off the I'm gonna stay off the streets, right? And I'm stay you know locked away in my my hundred percent my mausoleum, you know, my mausoleum fort underground somewhere, you know. Um, but so uh, things would kind of be you know for most of the rest of that winter, and then you know going into spring, uh, things wouldn't pop back up until you know late summer uh, of August 1970, where there apparently uh, one of these events was a, a two. Schoolgirls actually stumbled across what, the, what was the remains of a 100 year old corpse of a woman who had been, uh, you know, just by, you know, when they got there to investigators took a look, it, it seemed that she had been dragged from her coffin, decapitated, and oh, then staked shit. through the heart and then left in the middle of a pathway, like a well used pathway within the cemetery itself. <laughs> when all the other vampires unnoticed. Because so you stake them the heart and then you're supposed to cut their head off with the fucking shovel, right? Uh yes, with an iron with order. an iron blade. Yeah, oh, I like that. I thought it was oh, a shovel, yeah, like they fucking. What was the other burial thing? They used to like they used to like nail them through the mouth, like they put like a steel, like put like an iron yeah. spike in like their. Yeah. Mouth. They've tried a lot of stuff over the years. You nail you, you nail them in the mouth, right? You give them fucking nail them in the mouth, and you piss on them. You can't come back. I don't know if that's one. <laughs> that's how you do it. Uh, so, yeah, there's, there's, a lot of people have been trying over the years a whole bunch of different stuff. Let me tell you something. None of it really works. <laughs> can't keep can't keep a good vamp down. Can't. No. They're immortal. Uh, <laughs> uh, and you're then, gonna nail a vamp through the heart. It's gonna play dead. I gotta you're gonna bury it, off. whatever, and then it's gonna fucking get up, pull the thing it's out, like, and off it goes. Them. It's fine. It's gonna be a trick's kiddo out of that grave. Fucking dig out of there. Boom. <laughs> And now you're on his blacklist. And now you're going to be hunted for the rest of your life. So oh, you should fun. just stay away. Okay. Um, and also that same month, apparently, uh, Ferent and other members of his uh, the B Pos, the the B Posse, I guess you could call them the British paranormal. <laughs> <laughs> this is the British, the British psychic and occult uh, society. The B Posse. Uh, apparently, they entered the cemetery and they. W- walk to the site of where the that initial sighting had been uh of the of the the like the the liquid black ooze uh vampire that had emerged or shadowy liquid whatever you want to call it um and they apparently they they went through a whole ritual of 
you know, making a whole big show of this where they drew, uh, you know, their large circle upon the ground, which they sealed with their protective symbols, uh, you know, which they then, you know, dispensed around it. Salt and holy water took all the necessary precautions um, and then even uh, built a second circle, uh, <laughs> which was, uh, you know, they that's where you put your candles and your incense. And then – <laughs> and this is where um this is where Ferent and his is uh you know his B posse uh this is where they were intending to capture to summon and then contain the the demonic entity because they were still not quite sure that it was you know again he was saying that it wasn't a vampire it was something else the Ferent the Ferent squad uh was being like this is this is not a vampire it's something else or something maybe something similar to a vampire but not exactly a vampire because you know he's probably like you know fuck that Manchester guy it's not a vampire fuck him um and so they had set up this uh this elaborate uh summoning ritual in order to capture it and as pretty much as soon as they finished um, mm. and, and and started the the seance in order to summon this this creature this this entity. The cops busted in. The five zero five zero. Grab your holy water. Gotta go. Yeah. They're like you know fuck this right witchcraft still illegal assholes. It has nothing to do with witchcraft. <laughs> it has nothing to do with witchcraft. This is fucking England. They're using way too much salt. That's true. It's, that's <laughs> precious. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, too, it's not bland enough. There's too much flavor in these circles. Get rid of them. Sweep them up. <laughs> um, and so, uh, and so they all, you know, the B posse, like they they split up. They grabbed all their stuff, you know, as much as they could. They grabbed they, they grabbed the all their supplies and everything. Let's scramble. Um, but unfortunately for Ferent, he was caught and arrested, and they they arrested him on the charges of I think it was a. Uh, uh, desecration was one of them at least desecration i think was one of them maybe dismemberment it yeah, doesn't look very fast <laughs> i don't think he would get very far um and so uh again for another couple of years like you, you everything was kind of quiet and then the the entire thing would seem to come to an end um in 1973 where Ma manchester made the final claim pre that he himself personally had driven a stake through the heart of the vampire and that it is it was officially dead and and or banished uh for the, the foreseeable future and that well, it, it gets, was it, 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 he definitely like like you touched on this guy earlier he's got this guy's got a, a flair for the theatrics like this guy had his book outrageous like he's great storyteller i mean he might have borrowed a few things from old bram but like fucking like he puts a good is, spin on is, it so basically this is what he describes he says so sean and his associates claim to have found the tomb of the vampire same tomb that he followed that girl to that was sleepwalking okay all right all right got it got it in the tomb was an ornate black coffin mm. with a horribly emancip uh, emaciated emancipated emaciated corpse <laughs> spelling's not great emaciated mm -hmm. corpse inside uh -huh. that they totally not a vampire that's vampire. not where a vampire no. is sleep that's crazy <laughs> just as manchester went to drive a stake through the heart of this so the, the the vampire his colleague stopped him and reminded him that this would be desecration of a corpse we can't do oh. this we shouldn't do mm. this. no okay so they decided in turn to seal up this tomb brick by mm. brick and leave crucifixes garlic the whole fucking shebang in there case of and leave <laughs> now unfortunately this didn't stop the eagle the evil for long the locals were still being preyed upon um they found an escaped mental patient that was found in the cemetery covered in blood what yeah <laughs> what? this was in the this was in the ham and high as well uh Corpses were going missing. Somebody's high, I'm for sure. <laughs> Cor corpses were going missing from the graveyard. Uh, so bad that some guy went to go fucking hop in his car and drive to work one day, and he found a corpse behind the steering wheel of his car. Oh, what the fuck? That's some Ghostbusters shit. Like, right? what the fuck? <laughs> okay. That's insane. So, the Sean just decided to return to the graveyard with his associates 
and fucking seal the deal for sure this time because like, I can't take chances. Wait, wait. I'm sorry. We have to go back to the corpse behind the wheel. So it's like somebody the like took the, the wheel, corpse baby. and got it in, took the time to put it inside the car. And like, I imagine like Hilarious. they like put the hands like on, on the, the steering, steering wheel. wheel. Obviously. Maybe, they, like, maybe they just animated the, the corpse. Break. The corpse did it himself. Yeah. Or herself. Sure. Or itself. I mean, um, so anyways, <laughs> amazing. All this. All this shit's going down. Sean decides we got to go back. I guess I got to run the risk. I maybe I'll go to jail. I got to take care of this thing. I yeah, fucking, got to fucking. Got to do what you got to do. And right. wins vampires. See, listen, he put a corpse in my fucking car. All right, we're yeah, done with I'd this guy. Pissed. He's toast. Anyways, so they go off to the same tomb. <laughs> I'm gonna be late to work today. There's a corpse behind the fucking my car. <laughs> yeah, man. I be sure you can never uh, drive that car again. Uh, but when they got to said tomb. That black ornate coffin was gone. I forget. I get right. the Renfield, Renfield came and gone. got it. Sean then hunted, hunted the vampire every day for three years. Turns out he was in an abandoned mansion next to the cemetery. Ah. They found the ornate black coffin in the basement. And that's where he did the deal. He, he did the deed. Oh, he, he stalked abandoned him into the mansion. mansion. I mean, an abandoned mansion near. He's an aristocrat. He was. I, I get, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, right? he's an aristocratic vampire. You can't. You can't go stay like in a warehouse. In style. We like to live in style. I guess you can't. But yeah, you can't put your coffin inside like a warehouse or like someone's basement or something. No, it's got to be an abandoned mansion next to a cemetery. Like uh, that makes sense. Yeah. Somehow you have, it, you have to find the abandoned mansion next to a cemetery. It's a hard like thing, to, a hard combo to find. Listen, he probably listen. You want to know how he solved this? He probably had to call the fucking the, the mystery gang to fuck because they would have the first place they would have went to is the abandoned <laughs> mansion next to the cemetery. They would have known right away. Uh, right away. Right away. <laughs> right away. Um. So also in 1973, while this is all going down, like still the rivalry rivalry between these two powerful, you know, vampire hunters slash magicians uh, was still going on, and they it's decided been building, to building to and building, culminating to uh, one epic moment to, to a boiling point to a publicly announced magical duel. Which we would take have place. a duel. We don't know what a magical duel means, but we are going to present it to the public. Uh, which was to occur on par- on top of Parliament Hill. Uh, That's Hampstead. amazing. And <laughs> um, so you know, everybody. I bet you know. I bet everybody was super psyched for this. Was ready to go. Fucking nerd. They were selling the tickets. No, They're going to be hurling. It's going to be fucking rad, dude. There's going to be like dark energies and lightning bolts and fireballs being slung around. It's going to be amazing. Instead, I bet people literally going to look like those fucking nerds that LARP. And It'd probably be like yeah, that. Might have happened. Yes, that's that it may was, have. It was turning into a larping. That, it was turning into a larping incident. Is what was that's happening. Either of the. <laughs> I would love to LARP. In my mind, either of those scenarios are equally possible. But uh, the the battle was apparently called off, and and so uh, they. This is uh, not a fitting <laughs> venue for a magical duel. And um, and so the, the the pair kind of just started to kind of dedicate their energies more towards uh, writing and, uh, you know, publishing articles in the local newspapers, still, you know, still hurling insults and, and, and barbs at each they other. Didn't want for- to, they didn't want to expose their the extent of their magical abilities to the public. They wanted to keep that secret to themselves. <laughs> so unfortunately for uh, David Verrond... He ended up doing three years for desecrating corpses. Whoops. Oh, yeah. <laughs> three years. Like, he got some, like, there's some weird shit. Like, was, he was getting street cred. naked. Like, Are I'm there... talking like, no, no, we're talking like necrophilia type shit. Like human yeah. corpses? Oh, yeah. Like, he not was even, like. Not, not, not dead foxes. Human corpses. They, they, they had pictures of him, like, buck-ass naked in the cemetery next to the corpses and stuff like that. And then supposedly, uh, in true, in true uh, Job fashion, he stood up in crowd and was like, <laughs> I am too powerful for you to condemn me to jail. I will fire my lawyer and self-represent. And he did so. <laughs> and he, to jail. he fired his lawyer. He was going to get six months and he got three years. And like, but, okay, uh, like Dan said, this, <laughs> uh, this rivalry, like it, it was still strong. And I it guess, extended like, for years. Well, look at, look at on your Facebook group. This is David Ferrant's current fucking project. All right. And it is the greatest thing in the fucking world. 
the name of it is Bishop Bonkers. Bishop Bonkers. Yeah, and he, ma- he makes a little fucking cartoon. He makes cartoons about fucking Sean uh, Manchester. And then Sean <laughs> Manchester, in turn, uh, does, like, paintings of fucking David Ferrant as a <laughs> demon. And you can see it on his blog as well. The New Adventures of Bishop Bonkers. This is that damned infernal hoggy Hoagie has n- nicked our turkey. Wow. It's like what? a different language. It's like a different language. Yeah, it's like, and the, what? Er appears to have died accidentally, of course. That's the comic. <laughs> this is the comic he made. Bishop Bonkers is supposed to be Sean Mendes. UFOs, Satan, Ferrant. <laughs> it's fucking so stupid. All right. Interesting. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> what? Um, yeah, nice, so um, nice three panel comics right here. Yeah, and, and throughout the, throughout this rivalry, like even uh, Manchester uh, Manchester founded his own uh, like opposite, I guess uh, counter uh, counter organization, the the British Occult Society. So you had, you had the British Psychic and Occult Society, um, which uh, a Ferrant had presided over, and then Manchester founded the British Occult Society. Um, so they both had their own little gangs of you know followers and. <laughs> hangers on i suppose and um and ferrant ferrant apparently even ran for office uh at some point uh and he was he was he was the he was the sole candidate for the wicca workers party uh in 1978 which apparently advocated for which uh, (laughs) they advocated for things like nudity free sex and the restoration it, well, I, I don't think that corpses was, are extra. That, you gotta pay, you gotta that pay might have extra. been implied, but that was not written in there. I don't think it was in there. Um, they also you don't have uh, to pay them if they're dead, right? Is that how it goes? No, you have well, to pay. You have to pay the entry fee for the corpse. Well, well no, no, it goes like this because it's like they, they advocated for the restoration of the Wiccan creed and also the establishment of state brothels. So I guess the state would pay for okay. these. That's fair. <laughs> um, yeah, and then they were a and happier. Uh, you know, and hit. just to be on the the safe side, I guess we also wanted to outlaw communism and also leaving the EU common market. So just to hey, eventually they got the, they they got that in the end. They got that, <laughs> they got yeah. that in the end. Uh, um, yeah, it's a, it's like this. This is I find it amazing that these two, these two uh, had the energy to to really keep this rivalry going uh, for just decades um apparently like they they would just keep doing this like in in incre- you know incredibly petty shit the bishop bonkers thing um uh the other you know uh, publishing books you know publishing articles and everything there's probably there's probably like an editorial probably like every couple months from either one probably calling each other out uh, and all of this stuff um you know all the way up until ferrant's uh death in april of 2019 like r.i.p absolutely I, I, I'm, in, contract, I'm in awe of the, just the, him. how petty these he's, guys could be. <laughs> like, he's still haunting Sean Winchester or Manchester. We, sure. He can only hope. Like I, you know, yeah, it's just, that, <laughs> can't get rid of this guaranteed. poltergeist. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I imagine he's on his deathbed and he's like, "I'll get you. <laughs> I got you now, you pussy ass bitch." <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah. So. Um, so as far as we know, the the Highgate vampire, you know, according to Soli, pretty much uh, Manchester, uh, the he dispatched that he dispatched a vampire. Was it the Highgate vampire? Not sure. Um, but you could have something like uh, something as incredible as two. You know, I, I mean, these guys are like so they're magicians, sorcerers, I suppose. Like Sorcerer Supremes, own. I believe. I, yeah, I, I Wiccan, so. what are they, like a druid? Maybe, like, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I would classify Wiccan dru- like is a, a druid. druid? Like a druid. Druid's a shapeshifter, no? They are, Druidic? but they're like, they're like, they're like nature powered, you know? It's like, they're both, I put them in that, that, that kind of category. They can all be connected, I guess. Yeah, yeah could probably, they, they're, they're probably you No, know we probably have some uh, Wicked or Wiccan or Druid listeners who are going to get mad at yeah. us. So if you, I mean, there's go. probably some important. I'm no sure spells. there's some, some important. Dis- don't cast spells on us. It wasn't oh, our I'm fault. Sorry. We don't know. I'm sorry. We I'm, didn't know. I'm cool. I, I'm cool with establishing a Wicca workers party and advocating for nudity and free sex. Free sex. And We're establishing and state short. brothels. Okay. I have it bad enough. I'm, I'm not so <laughs> much about yeah, outlawing communism. I don't know about outlawing communism. You know, you could toss that out. I'm not really, you know, whatever. 
I don't, it, I'm not really it really doesn't need to be outlawed because it just doesn't really exist here. And so, I mean, yeah, all the other stuff is pretty good in my book. So, you know, cool. Book of Workers Party 2024. <laughs> when, when's the next election? I don't yeah. know. Uh, so, I, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a, this case was just really fun, uh, like a really fun one to kind of look up because it's like it's not every day that you have like a, two personalities as, outsta- as outstandingly strange it uh, devolved from guys. a from a vampire a prospected vampire in a cemetery to just two demon hunters duking yeah. it out for public it's like and you had a legit persuasion. vampire panic in the in the 19th i mean this probably i mean this probably topped on with the you know the, sa- the you know the satanic panic satanic panic um, around, the same around time, then yeah. well satanic uh, panic was in the 80s was it not there was a satanic panic back then too. I'm pretty sure. That's every couple. Of like decades. the true satanic panic, probably brought on by like D and D and role playing games, was in the 80s, I believe. But there's, I'm sure. I mean, there's been satanic panics I'm sh- throughout history, and come, yeah. they come and go in waves. We just had and a recent. We've on. had a recent one. You know. Yeah, we, we just had a recent because right, that that Michelle remembers or whatever, right? That book by that Canadian author. I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, we talked about that one. Yeah. Um, so like, yeah, I, I mean. Uh, satanic panics they come in waves they come and go from different versions throughout history we just had our own personal one just over the last few years here really <laughs> there's been different ones they come and go they bring on a lot of panic a lot of mass hysteria yeah, but where where are our magicians where are yeah, where are our Funny. people Where's... summoning a public duel at yeah. Parliament Hill. Where are our people drawing their crazy? They're not crazy, oh but we're drawing we their their, their summoning circles and all of these. Fauci like, yeah. and Trump. Yeah, oh, where the, yeah. Where the fuck are our guys challenged? Yeah, that's, how, that's, how that's, come that should our be part, politicians aren't brave enough to call each other out? And that should be part of it. Anymore? There should be God debate and then public magical duel. Yeah, Those should be the yeah. two options for elections. I want to see. I want to see fucking gloves being removed and slapped upon the other. <laughs> I demand <laughs> satisfaction. <laughs> yeah, like Throwing the gauntlet down on the ground, just like yeah, yeah. let's go. Uh, yeah, that should that. Yeah, you know, uh, there's so much more cooler shit we could be doing with elections. Proficiency in magic should be a that should be a high, should high be a qualification on the list. for yep. uh, politicians. It should. Uh, well, that's how from, we should elect them. There should be no election. They should fucking duel it out. See who wins. <laughs> and if and, you don't win, you die. It's better that's, that way. Because you, you have to. Want... I mean, there's got to be some kind of demo- democratic process, or else we'll just be ruled over by. There'll be a referee. Warlords. There'll be like, a referee. Gotta, There'll be a referee. I don't need wizard. I don't need to live in a, a post-apocalyptic. There'll wizard be a wizard ref, so you society. can't actually kill the other the combatants. They can't kill each other. <laughs> Avada Kedavra will be outlawed on this wizard that's duel. Fair. Yeah, yeah. Cruciatus curse too. So there is there is cooler options for elections, and uh, I hope that uh, we see them both in Canada, the states, and England in this case. Yeah. Well, if forward. anybody runs with that platform, I'm voting for him. I mean, 100. percent I'm in. Mm-hmm. Done. Bring it back. Bring back Black Magic. Blood Bring magic. back Wicked Workers Party. Come on. Yep. You put that on t-shirt. <laughs> state state sponsored brothels. Somebody put that. I don't know. But that never mind. That's our t-shirt idea. Copy mark. Back. Copy. Cop- trademark. Copyright. Trademark. Copyright. Sars. Sars. March. March twentieth, whenever we're recording this, <laughs> fuck whatever. Uh, yeah, it's a fucking, rad. it's a, it's a rad <laughs> case. This is just nuts. It's, it's fucking just like, wild. It's just like, I like having two people. I, I imagine it was a really fun time to be like just reading the newspapers, and you're just like, what's what's Manchester in front up to today? And it's like, oh, you know, fucking, I cast a curse on this this asshole, and like, and, oh, neat. <laughs> For literally forty years until like 2019 when he died, this was they were going back and forth. I feel I feel like this is like man I kind of sometimes you know everybody has like internet blogs and stuff like that like everybody's got like an internet blog and all this kind of stuff and I kind of miss the days of like local local newspapers where you could have that's shit all like you this. heard you had the yeah you can have this shit unfolding and it's just like this is Everyone's all you're really getting in. yeah everybody's reading the newspaper and you're like holy like a weekly newspaper like to see how the Ferrant Manchester magical uh, magical duel is shaping up like and this is, and it's and you're just like oh wow like neat yeah, now that's all you cool. have is like local rant and raves on facebook yeah yeah it's just like that's what okay. it is. yeah I've, you know whatever just like local, local local junkie news or something you know <laughs> got a lot of that got a lot of that uh, locally so, i don't know um, it's a cool case yeah, it's uh, it, was, it was definitely fun to look into <laughs> and i hope i hope we get something similar some type of wizard duel in the future Maybe I can challenge someone. 
for local government. I mean, I'll start with, I mean, I'll start, can, I'll start with yeah, local government. Call him out for sure. Who's the current mayor of Kelowna? Uh, Just call, call your local Dias. newspaper and get it. Tom Dias. Hey, Tommy Dias. I'm coming, coming for, for you. you. Coming for you. Local. Call your local newspaper. <laughs> Wizard duel. And get that, get that article so we can clip it out. So we can get like... <laughs> You know, local I, man, local man, uh, look, local. Music I have a pretty good connection. I mean, Diaz for magical duel. <laughs> I know, I know one of the authors for uh, Kelowna Castnet News, our local news channel. Do it like really well, and yeah. I bet you I could convince him to write an article about this because he's do written it. some. He's written some do ridiculous it. articles over the years. I bet, hey man, do, it. do you want to write something funny? He he probably be go. Yes, I do. do what do you got do for it. me? <laughs> local wizard to, and half vampire to, eternal vampire zalarius challenges tom dias for a duel for ownership and stewardship of Kelowna city council we'll have to we might have to, we have to dip into some a podcast funds crazy? to fund hey. a full page du- magical duel Man, challenge <laughs> we used to have a jedi <laughs> we did have a local we jedi we, we did have a local jedi, jedi. Yep. yeah yep. he's quite powerful make, make Kelowna weird again Absolutely. Wow, it's pretty fucking weird. It's pretty fucking it's weird. Like yeah, but like in the good way. Right now. But like in a good way. way. Yeah, in a fun yeah, way. In a, in a magical in fun way. Yeah, yeah in the magic of fun way. Yeah. That's right. 100%. Uh, anyways, fun case. If you haven't, haven't looked it up, there's a lot out there. There's a lot, a lot on it. It's a, it was a big deal there in the seven, early 70s. So. Yeah. All right, this week's Theory of the Week. You got to give it up. Have to. You got to give it up. He may he may not hear his name be read for no. maybe ever. Yeah, that's fair. Maybe ever. Maybe there's maybe hopefully there's, ever because he's going to grow up in shame if he ever listens. To if he ever podcast. listens to the podcast, he'll grow up in shame. But Roman Alec Renner is this week's theorite of the week for being born healthy and alive. Bonus. Is Andrew frozen? <laughs> Yes, he is. Fuck! We did Amazing. so well. We almost, we almost we made almost it. We almost made it. We almost fucking made it tonight. Oh, shit. Well, yeah. but. he's frozen. So, yeah, Theory of the Week is uh, Braden and Jamie's beautiful baby boy. The first, I bet you it's the first of their family, actually. So yeah. the, parents, the parents will be quite happy to have their first grandchild. So we wish them the best. Braden will be joining, joining the show next week. Maybe maybe he'll take one more one more week off. Who knows? But he'll be back in no time at all. All right. And if you're not supporting the show already, you should. Why not? Why not? Not I even mean, not even support us. Look, okay, we're like giving you stuff. trade. Like it's it's not like you're just supporting us. Like we are. We're it's even, it's even an unequal trade for because you can give us like you know for just like five bucks. Five, five bucks. bucks. You get every, you get a whole bunch of stuff. And probably one of the best things that we don't we don't say enough is that we do have a Discord server. We have a Discord server that is a direct line to us. So even so if you know you want to hit us up with something, you want to like message us, you want to talk with other theorites and stuff and like our whole little community in there, which is actually pretty fucking awesome. Like there's the a fun. bunch of we're the least ton cool of, people on that group. This is true. Yes. Cool this is true. This is true. Um, all of, all of the super fun people who are on there, um, you know, we've had a we got a great little community that we built over the years there, and um, you know, fun people to, to talk with and whatever. Talk about anything you want to talk about aliens, talk about conspiracies, talk about all that stuff. You can do that, and you have a direct line to us. You want to tell one of you want to get on there and tell us, you know, you want to say nice things to us. Great. You want to tell us that we suck. Sure, whatever. Uh, yeah, <laughs> take it. <laughs> it's a direct um, line to some enough equally weird, equally. Basis like-minded weirdos over there on discord you also and get weird that. in the fun way like we mentioned before weird in the fun way <laughs> weird weird fun um but yeah it's yeah if if you want access to that and much much more uh you know extra case files uh you know confidentials a whole bunch of other super neat stuff um or or to- if you just like listening to the main case file you're like that's all i got time for yeah and you hate the ads it's ad free show you get it early week early uh, that's the trade. That is the trade. Five bucks a month. We'd appreciate it. And then we also read your beautiful names live on the podcast. Yes. Might this week's wrong. newest. And we say most of them quite wrong, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This week's new uh, supporters, Dan, start us off. We have Fernando Rosales, uh, Owen, and Andre, uh, Michael Rutledge, Rutledge, Grimlock, ah, Grimlock. Oh, he's he's ready for a magic, magical duel. Duel. Yeah. 
Grimlock, uh, leader of the Dinobots. Uh, Mick. It's Mick. Mick, just Mick. You're a bum, Rock. Like that, Mick? Yeah. <laughs> Could be. Uh, anyway. Andrew, do you have the notes up? We've also got Tactical Platius. Andrew's frozen uh, again. Andrew froze. We have going tactical down. platypus or pl- platyus. It could be platypus. Same, it's probably supposed to be platypus. We might have misspelled it. Um, that's fine. That's pretty good too. I, I copy pasted. Tactical, I think I've seen tactical platypus in our Discord server. So there we have ape underwater spelled with threes. I like those threes instead of ease. Yeah. <laughs> we have saber tooth Tyler. That's a good name. Saber tooth Tyler. Saber tooth Tyler. Fuck that's yeah. That's fantastic. I love it. Uh, drummer from Fat. Oh, Stokey J. Drummer Stokey from J. Fat Lip. Uh, Legend for his band, uh, uh, Fat Lip, uh, Aussie band. They're, uh, they're a Aussie. fucking punk rock, punk rock, punk rock cover band from England somewhere, I believe. England, sorry, England. I I, England and Australia are the same place. We know because Australia doesn't they're exist. Both so we, we yeah, I think they're both we, fake. Actually, they're both fake. Said they're islands. Yeah, we're right. <sighs> Nobody's ever been there. Nobody's ever really been there. Uh, you got Brandon Munsey, uh, Bear Country, Bear Country, Nathan Sour, Magus Magoo. We got Braxton Kid. We got Noel. Or is it Noel? I don't know. Solid Lib. Moon Bear. Spaceman Spiff. And Jefferson Schlosser. Thank you very much for supporting the show. We fucking appreciate it. Braden? And as we always say, keep those eyes on the skies. See you after hours. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I know it's annoying to watch these broken up in 10 minute segments, but here's the next one over here. Or if you wanna watch the whole thing uncut and after hours, just click this link to our website and uh, give us a donation. You get full access to it on Patreon. Anyways, thanks guys, enjoy the next video.